Midnight Muses here. Um, hilariously, I actually just shot most of my video and then got a call from my boyfriend that stopped everything and messed it up and erased like the last five minutes of it, which was great. Um, and because I'm crap at editing, I'm just reshooting, which is fine because I'm not doing a makeup video today anyway. And I was rambling probably more than I needed to in my first attempt. So second attempt, here we go. Um, just having my tea today. I love this. It's lemon hibiscus tea. And I put honey in it because I have a sore throat. I couldn't talk at all yesterday. So that's what I live on when I have a sore throat. I haven't actually gone as far as saying that I'm sick because I'm not stuffy and I don't have a headache. I don't have any chest, but like my throat is sore. Couldn't talk. Living on the Buckleys and the soup and the tea for the day because I can't be sick on the weekend because Sean and I are doing our Valentine's Day this Saturday because he works during Valentine's Day. <clears throat> and yes, I know we could do it next Saturday, but we want to do it this Saturday and he says we can. It's fine. I'm going to love it. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to enjoy it and I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it a lot. But I can't be sick, so lots of tea, lots of Buckleys. Good to go. Um, anyways, I want to say, um, I know I said in my last video that I had ordered a ring light and a new kind of camera setup. I'm going out of focus. Kind of can see it. Um, and they did arrive today and I love it so much because I actually am filming in the afternoon today where we don't have any more daylight. So this is actually all coming from the ring light that's like above my camera. Um, I'm also sitting in a different location. Um, as you can see, I got my bookshelves behind me and a mug that I need to bring downstairs because, you know, tea, lots of tea, all the tea, so much tea. But, um, I like this a lot better. It's a much better setup. I hated my other setup because I had to sit on my bed and I had to clear off my bed every time I wanted to use it so I could put my makeup out and then I would always end up having to wash my sheets after because I would always get like powders and stuff on it. So I like this better. I'm just sitting on my floor, but it also means that like I have solid surfaces. So like I can put like my stand up mirror next to me and like not have to worry about it, like shaking off a pillow or any of that kind of stuff. And also I can film whenever I want to film. I don't have to like, like, oh my gosh, I need to be home between like these hours so that I can, I can film and I have to be awake and I have to do this and I have to, like, it was just like, and also my brains don't work very well at that time. I'm very much a night owl. I think better during the night. I'm much more creative at night. Um, and I think that'll do a lot in terms of helping my channel because if I can film when I'm at my most comfortable and, and at my most creative, first of all, you're going to get a, a far better makeup looks out of me because I'm going to be really like, okay, I'm excited to like try out this or that today. Um, and also even when it comes to like my mental health updates, they will most likely still be a little bit rambly because that's just how I am, as you can tell. Uh, but not as rambling. They'll be a little bit more concise. You know, I can like stick to a topic a little bit better because that's when my brain just works best is in the night hour. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love this light. It's so bright. It's so nice. Um, I could probably sit a little bit closer, but I don't know. As I said, I'm not doing a makeup video today. So today I don't need to be like up in the camera so you can like see how I'm doing my eyeliner. But I like this because I can like move it around however I want to. And it's just surrounded by all of like my creative stuff, which is cool that's like that's my hair and then I have art supplies all up here and then I have extra characters for my Halloween town which is above there and then I have hair supplies and candles and miscellaneous this is actually mostly like the bottom drawer that you can't even see is like random stuff that I've got from like concerts and like shows that I've worked at and you know things that really I don't need to keep but can't let go of <laughs> everyone has one of those drawers right I'm not the only one um, anyways, but what I wanted to talk about today really was my mental health update, which I've been promising for a while and have not been delivering on. I've just been doing random makeup and makeup and makeup and makeup, but I do really want to do an update on my health. And I think it's because I was in a very like up and down place. I wasn't really sure what was going on. And, um, I was still trying to figure things out and kind of like figure out a plan. Um, I don't want to go as far as to say that like I have like a set plan right now, because to be honest, I don't. Um, but I am a little bit more like, okay, this is kind of where I want to go with things. So I'll start off by telling you a little bit my, about my day today. Today sucked. Um, I mean, it was great, but it sucked because today was my last appointment with my 
favorite therapist of all time. She's so wonderful. Um, I'm not going to say her name because, you know, I'll say Sean's name because he has a YouTube channel. And he does all that, but I won't say her name. Um, but she's so, so, so fantastic. Um, and it was, it was, today sucked because it was my last appointment. That's why today sucked. Um, and I, I love her so much. She has given me this safe space to really like deal with and, and all of my stuff and talk about things that I haven't talked about with anyone. And what it ended up doing for me, um, is cause I have blocked memories from when I was a child. It's helped to unlock some of those memories. They're not good memories, um, about stuff that happened with, um, a certain person, but it's, it's, it's done so much for me because, um, I've had reactions to things that were too extreme for what happened, you know, like, like they were like a major overreaction, but at the same time, it's like, it was coming from someone. There was a reason why I reacted that violently to that. And by unlocking these memories, it's kind of like, okay, well that makes sense. Um, because this happened and now your, your mind is just going back to that and, and try and seeing it happening again and going like, whoo. Um, so it's been really good in that way. Sorry. I just need to, oh no, need to get my Buckley's cause you know, when you got a cold Buckley's, well, I, again, I don't have a cold. I just have a sore throat. I'm not stuffy. I have no headache. I have no chest. It's just, I couldn't talk yesterday. So today it's just tea and soup and Buckley's cause I don't want it to become a cold. I guess that's what I should say. My boyfriend had a little bit of a cold, so I think I'm picking it up from him, but I'm avoiding it from actually happening. And I love Buckley's. My favorite thing, especially the mucus relief. Take that, 24 hours, you're good. Um, but anyways, so today, yeah, so today was my last appointment with, with that therapist. I do start with a new counselor next week, so that's good but at the same time I'm nervous about it because um therapy nowadays is very different than when I first started doing therapy because I first started doing therapy when I was a teenager which is like 16 years ago and um you can talk about anything then anything like anything that was bothering you anything that happened to you how you dealt with things how you coped with things whether they were good or bad you could talk about anything and now everything's like trigger warning and it's very difficult because it's like, okay, I understand trigger warning when like you're doing what I'm doing, you know, you're talking on YouTube, you know, if you're, if you're going to talk about like certain things, put a trigger warning in there. I get that. But when you're doing one-on-one -on -one therapy, why do we need to have trigger warnings? Why can I not talk about things that I need to talk about? Because if I can't talk about them, how am I supposed to process them? And then, therefore, and then if I can't process them, I can't deal with them. I can't move forward from them. So it's, it's very difficult. And like I did DBT which is a therapy that's like made for borderline personality disorder. And like, they gave me some really great coping mechanisms, which is, you know, a plus, but at the same time, in terms of like talking, it was like, can't talk about self harm. Can't talk about suicidal tendencies. Can't talk about any kinds of abuse. You can say that you've, that you've been through abuse, but you can't talk about the kind that you've had or any details. Like it was literally like, you can talk, you can't, you, uh, sorry. It was basically like, you can't give any details about anything ever. But yet you're supposed to process everything that you've been through and move forward from it using those coping mechanisms. But it's like those coping mechanisms don't work so well when you can't discuss why you need them in the first place. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, something that I know for a fact to be true because I've had therapists that just kind of like do this with you. This is again back in the day, not now, where if you just go over um, things in your past that have hurt you over and over again, you're going to just be stuck there because you're going to be reliving it over and over and over again. And that's not healthy. But in turn, they've gone, now gone 180 in the other direction where you can't talk about it at all. And it's like, okay, no, that doesn't work either. Because if you don't essentially admit to it, because a lot of time people don't even admit to like what they've been through because it's too difficult, you can't move forward from it. So it's like, okay, you know, get it out of the way in the beginning and say, okay, but this is, you know, from dealing with this or going through this or experiencing this or whatever, I now react to things in this, this, and that way. Or it's, it's, you know, it changed my life in this, this, and that way. Or, you know, I do these things and I think it's because of this and I don't know how to change that. Can you help me? Um, so like having them have an idea of like what you've been through is helpful because then they know, okay, well maybe try this coping me mechanism as opposed to this one or that, or like it just, it makes it easier. But I find that that's what today's world is now with the whole PC culture is that 
we've gone from like one spectrum where it was like totally okay to be like racist and judgmental to everybody that you wanted to and that was fine to now you can't say anything about anyone in any way at all and it's like uh, can we please find a happy medium somewhere in the middle like don't get me wrong i'm not cool with people being like racist or derogatory or any of that kind of stuff but then like people take it too far it's like i was talking like me and my friend jess were talking about it it's kind of like if i were to describe her you know pc way i'd be like oh you know she has brown hair and brown eyes and um yeah because I, you can't say that she's a little bit bigger she's not she's like a quarter of the size of me she's lost so much weight i'm so proud of her can't say that she's black um can't like can't like it's it's like yeah it's so frustrating Whereas it's like, I only, where it's, and, 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 and the thing is, that's what I do. I call her, I call her my, you know, Jessica, my, 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 my black friend, Jessica. And the reason why I will say that about her is because I know a lot of Jessica's only one of them is her skin, skin tone. And I'm not doing it to be derogatory or to be racist. I'm literally doing it so that people will know like immediately who I'm talking about because she's the only Jessica that I know that has dark skin. Like it's not being racist. And people are so fussy about everything and it drives me freaking bonkers so i just you know i hope i hope i hope my new therapy goes well and they're, they're not crazy pc like every buddy seems to be these days um but other than that i'm like working on things i've been really good with having my health shakes i haven't had them the last two days or well yesterday and today but as I said, sore throat, living on tea, and with my health shakes, what I do is I do like a lot. Of, I do like yogurt and berries and my protein and all that kind of stuff. And when I'm sick, I don't do any dairy at all. I immediately cut it out, um, just because what I find is that if I have dairy when I'm not feeling well, it will turn it from something that I can get rid of in 24 hours into a full blown cold because I I'm already lactose intolerant, and then like dairy is so like creamy and whatever. It just like really like adds to all the crap in my throat so i'll go back to my shakes once i feel better don't worry i love them it's actually really funny because i have um specifically like a women's shake and my brother and sean both love it and they're like oh you're making shakes can i have one too <laughs> they're so we're all drinking my women's shake together um but i mean whatever it's healthy and if they want to have it good on them like why not i think the only thing you know that makes it like women's is the fact that there's like b12 and cranberry in it but otherwise it's like spinach and antioxidants and like all kinds of good healthy things i don't know i love them and they make me feel really good and i don't know like placebo effect whatever but i always feel far more productive when i have one of those and like i do a lot more like i'll get through my laundry or my cleaning or like whatever my goal is because my thing right now that i'm trying to do is i'm trying to do like one goal per day um just to like slowly build consistency and stability um, because I'm still struggling. Like, um, I was talking to my therapist about it today that I'm doing a lot better day to day, but for some reason, Sunday night and all of Monday have been like my bad days. And it's like every single week I'm having bad days. And it's really frustrating because like I had gotten to a point where I was still having them, but they were like sporadic. And I could get over it quickly. Whereas now it's like, oh, Monday's coming. You know that you're not going to get out of bed on Monday. And it sucks. And I liked that before. I would always like film on Monday or Tuesday. But like, <clears throat> sorry, I realize I keep saying like all the time. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't usually talk like that. Uh, but now like I'm not filming as much on Monday and Tuesdays. And it's because I feel like crap. And I don't want to film when I feel like crap. So I'm trying to get myself out of that and and really stick to like just just simple things like I mean I have my shakes every day that's not part of my goals it's essentially like if 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 uh I manage to find consistency in something and I and I do it straight for like two weeks plus it's gone off the goal list it's now just become part of like my daily to-do list um and I found that that's something that's working for me so it's like okay like my goal for today you have to do some laundry and if you can do some tidying up in your room a plus um especially since i feel like crap when i feel like crap i really try to keep the list low because i know that all i want to do is sleep um so today is literally laundry some tidying up you don't want to see my bed right now 
um, because I was in a rush to put on makeup before I went to therapy because I knew I was going to be really emotional. And like something that I do when I know I'm going to be emotional is I like to put on a face. Um, because it just kind of helps me deal a little bit better. And I didn't want to have my last appointment of be me bawling down the place and then not say what I needed to say. So by putting on the makeup, it kind of helped me keep my emotions in. They were there, they were on the surface, I got a little teary eyed, but like it, it, it helped me enough that I could get through and I could say what I wanted to say to her because as I said, I love her dearly and I like, I don't know, I'm, I will definitely be crying later, probably, actually I'll probably be crying like in like a week or so when I realize that I don't have another appointment and then it's going to be like, okay, here come the floodgates because I'm going to really miss her. And also because I've done the most progress that I've done with any other like therapist, counselor, whatever, I've done the most progress with her and she's aware of it too. And she's just as, uh, she is just as upset as I am about the fact that we don't have any more sessions. So that's also really hard because if it, was, if it was just me being upset, that'd be fine. But like, she's also really upset and like told me that she actually went to like the director about it to like try and get some more sessions but they did the whole like okay well you can't because if you do it for one then you have to do it for all kind of thing and you know as she says she goes it's, it's hard because she's like you make progress you do the work you know we talk about things to try and do and you go home and you do them and you come back with progress reports and how this is working and how that's doing and i just said you know i have now unlocked some memories that were blocked for me and it's because i work hard and it's something that i actually hear <coughs> from my caseworkers and essentially everyone that I deal with in like the medical field is I do the work. I, cause, and, and the reason why I do the work is because I want to be better. I don't want to live locked away in my bedroom, you know? I haven't worked in almost two years and like it's weird because it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but at the same time, it feels like longer. But I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of just living in this bedroom. I want something more for my life than just living in a bedroom, you know? Like, trying to get married and and I want to have my own family and my own life and I can't do that locked away in my bedroom I have to like get out and do and 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 live so I think it's just it's not determination and I think that I you know not I think I know falling in love really has everything to do with that like just finding the right person makes all the difference in the world it's crazy because the whole time that I was in the hospital, I was just pretending. And, like, I talked to my brother about it. And I think I, t I, t I already talked about this on a video where it's, like, he knew I was pretending. He just didn't tell me that because he didn't want to, like, he didn't want me to stop trying. Like, even even though it was pretend trying, he didn't, he didn't want me to just give up and, you know, do stupid things. Um, but he knew I was pretending. The only time that I really, really started to try and actually feel like myself again was when I met Sean. And it was crazy. Like, the first day that I met him, I knew I was going to marry him. And, like, people say that, oh, that doesn't happen. That's not really it. It's 100% real. Um, I just, it has completely changed every aspect of my life. Because now it's, like, even when it comes to, like, self-harm, like, don't get me wrong. I think about that every day. Like, every day. There is nothing that I am more addicted to than that because of what it does for me. Um, but I can't do it anymore um because I couldn't bear the disappointment of him seeing fresh marks on my body I just I couldn't do it I just I could not do it um and in terms of like my suicidal ideation um I was talking to a I think I think I was talking to my brother about it where for the first time in my life I I don't feel like he would be better off without me and that's huge because my whole life like I've always always had suicidal tendencies that's just part of who I am but I, my theory was always that you know yeah they'll be sad at first but then they'll be happier that they don't have to deal with me anymore and deal with my constant illness and my constant like mood swings and craziness and you know it'll be better off in the end for the first time in my life I genuinely don't believe that I don't believe that he would be happier without me in his life and that's again that's like monumental and like I'm gonna get emotional just talking about that I hope he doesn't see this because he's gonna be like oh my gosh but um but no I just it's it's I have faith that I can have a life I never saw my life past 
21 and then when I passed 21 I never saw my life past 30 and it's funny I met him just after my 30th birthday and now I see myself growing old and I've, n I've never like not even for a half second did I ever think that that would happen and now I do and now you know I'm concerned about all of the crap that I've done like all the drugs and, and the pills and everything and I want to make sure that like I'm healthy and that I can live that long now that I haven't destroyed my body from all the crap that I've done to it like I just like I'm worried about things now you know I, I, I really genuinely want to have a family now and not just be an aunt but like have my own family and live a life and do things with this person that I love and, and, and have this and get married and I never wanted those things before and the reason why I never wanted them is because I never wanted to live long enough to do them and now I do and it's because I fell in love and it's changed my whole world um and I just I don't know it's crazy and it's wonderful um and, and that's why I try so hard now and I try so hard and it's not that I'm trying so hard for him it's that I love how he makes me feel and I love how I love who I am with him I love that he brings out the best in me and he makes me want to do the best for myself and he's so supportive and you know he's happy and it's like even in terms of like my weight loss goals like I want to like lose weight he's so so supportive with that and not in a like oh well you know like did you work out today like you're getting kind of chunky like did you work out like he's not like that at all like he has been very clear that he loves me as I am now and if I lose weight that's fine just please don't lose too much weight because you're curvy and I like curvy but like he's so supportive and like anytime that there's like a little bit of progress even if I haven't noticed it he'll be like hey you know I noticed that you're you know your arms look a little bit smaller or your face looks a little bit toned or like you know like just like small things like that he's so so sweet and when it comes to my mental health he'll be like hey you know I noticed you haven't had a panic attack in a while like he's just He's really, really good, and I'm so grateful for him. Like, every day I'm so grateful for him. Uh, that's why I'm looking forward to it. We're doing our Valentine's this weekend, and I'm so looking forward to it. Because he is absolutely my world, and I'm so thankful for him. Um, it's just because he, he, he really made, he made, uh, I can't talk. I can't talk. It's too much. But uh, he made me find myself. Like, really find myself. And, and, and find belief and strength in myself. Because I always thought that I was weak and that I could never do it. And now I know that I can. And it's hard and it's difficult. And I'm going to have to keep working. And it's going to be a long, long journey. But I can do it. I absolutely can. Um, but one goal at a time. And so today it's laundry. Um, tomorrow I have my friend Jess coming over. Um, but that's my thing. is, And I just write it in I have like my little journal that I use um actually I think I have it yeah right here my current journal that I'm using and I like it because it has like the little like things where you can like mark off where you're writing and I just write in whatever my goal for that day is like okay keep it really simple today is just like I said today's laundry tomorrow could be like okay go clean an area like one thing that I do is that like I'll take like okay like that bookshelf there and be like okay that has to be organized I know it looks messy, but it's actually organized. Like, at the bottom, there's, like, my jewelry box. Second drawer is paint box. Um, or, sorry, third shelf is makeup items. And then above, there's, like, books and stuff. I haven't done the top parts, but I've done down there. So, it's, like, I, I give myself, like, small areas. I'm, like, okay, work here, finish this, work here, do that. But each day, one thing. Because what I was doing before was, like, I'd make a whole list of, like, everything that I wanted to have done. And... The list would be so long that, like, realistically, there's no way you could get through any of that a day. Like, no way. And so by doing that, I was setting myself up for disappointment. But what ended up happening was that I obviously wouldn't finish the list because, like, I would have laundry. I would have cleaned my entire bedroom. I would have cleaned the bathroom, make dinner. Like, just, I, I would have it very, very full. And then, like, I would also have, like, different coping things. Make sure you spend at least an hour on meditation and... Like, make sure you paint for this much time and do that for that much time and, like, and, and write for this much time. It would, just, it would literally be a list that would take, like, at least, like, 90 hours to, to finish. I expect it to be done in, like, 10. So, and, and it's stupid. And then people are like, oh, well, you know, well, you can use that list and be like, that's your list for the week. And it's like, you know, no. that Because, again, if I don't finish that massive list, then... I'm going to feel like I've failed. So better to start off small. And then, you know, the more that I do, like my, my one day a thing, one, uh, one thing a day thing, then I can build. 
you know, as I go along, you know, be like, okay, I'm getting through my daily tasks very easy right now. So let's add another thing to it and then add another thing to it. And then from there, we can start making those longer term goals. I don't like to make very long, long term goals. <coughs> I like things that are, I don't know, attainable, I guess. Like I find that with you, a lot of people do like, oh, in five years, I want to be here and 10 years, I want to be here. I don't do any of that. Because it's too far in my future. For me, I need to have a goal that I can reach, like, in a realistically, like, in a, re uh, in a realistic amount of time. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, in five years I want to be, like, working at this salon or whatever. I want to do, okay, within the next month, what can I accomplish? Um, the most I'll do is, like, six months. And that's only for things that are, like, you have to have, like, that, that need to have, like, more time to get done. But, like, right now it's, like, I want to be in some kind of training or work program in the next three months. That's my long-term goal. And so I have that there ready. And in the meantime, that's why I'm doing like my daily and weekly goals. So I can build up to a point where I'm consistent in my everyday life so that I feel like, okay, when I get to that point a couple months down the road, I'm actually ready to take on that step where, you know, I've gotten through my daily stuff. I've organized my daily life to the point where I can, I can do it. You know, I'm not like, okay, well, if I do that, then I'm not going to have any time for this or any time for that or any time for that. And I didn't do any of these things and I'm not ready for this. And you know, then the anxiety comes, you start freaking out. So it's like, no, do your daily things, get ready and get prepared. And you know what, if you have to push it back a month, you have to push it back a month. But like, I like my daily goals because my daily goals make me feel accomplished and they make me feel like I can take on more and keep working and keep doing. Um, but yeah. So anyways, this video is going on for long and I did ramble a little bit more than I was planning on, but <clears throat> also I'm starting to get a little bit too coffee. I've been talking too much. I need to have some more tea and probably have some soup because I haven't eaten yet today. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching. I will be back at some point. I'm not sure when. Um, probably on Monday, realistically. Maybe I'll shoot tomorrow. I don't know. I, as I said, I have my friend Jessica here. I know she's not comfortable being on camera, so chances are I will not be filming with her, but, um, I would love to, if she would let me. Um, but eh, thanks for watching and I will be back maybe tomorrow, but definitely next week. All right. Bye.